I spent the last year going through thousands of Minecraft packs and these are the very best ones. Enjoy! You can actually walk on air in vanilla Minecraft. In order to pull this trick off, you have to aim perfectly straight when crossing a one block gap. Sure, Jesus could walk on water, but Steve can walk on air. The dolphin on Bedrock Edition is a lot better than the one on Java and that's because it produces bubbles that you can breathe when you swim behind it. Bet you didn't know that. The beacon texture was changed five times throughout Minecraft's history. Wait a minute, is that a new diamond block texture? I wonder if that's coming in 1.20. Almost nobody knows that when you get stung by a bee, the actual stinger remains on your skin. You can clearly see this when you go invisible. Hold on, doesn't the real life bee die if it loses its stinger? Seems like Jeb wasn't paying attention in school. Some players use honey blocks in complex redstone builds. Amateurs. Real gamers use honey in their walls. If you place two blocks of honey next to each other, you can shoot arrows through them. Castles from stone bricks are a thing of the past. Honey castles are the future. Few years ago, Mojang gave the players a chance to have their cat added to Minecraft. A Twitter poll was started and the winner was Jelly. Overnight, this cat became super famous, almost as famous as her owner. Good times with Scar. Did you know there is a way to make an infinite respawn anchor? If you have a base in the nether then listen up, because you have to build this thing. All it takes is an observer, a dispenser and some redstone. Fill the dispenser with a bunch of glowstone and you're done. Even though this trick is cool, I think I'll stick to using beds. If you had to guess what item is used in the most amount of crafting recipes, what would you say? Sticks? Cobblestone? Or maybe wood? Well, it's none of these. The title goes to Iron Ingots. Turns out there is a reason why the best Minecraft players always build an iron farm as fast as possible. But there is one item that's even more special than iron ingots, and that's nether bricks. The nether brick is the only block that can be crafted into both fences and walls. It would be nice if Mojang added more blocks like this but I guess they're busy adding new skins that nobody asked for. You probably have no idea that you can use villages to find strongholds. When you create a new world on Bedrock Edition, the game needs to generate the strongholds and it tries to put them under village meeting points. But Tadusak, why is that? Well, no one knows. Just stick to the good old eyes of Ender, because finding a village with a stronghold below it is extremely rare. Almost as rare as getting water from stone. Yeah, I just did that. And no, I'm not a cheater, nor am I a magician. I simply took advantage of waterlogging. Mojang added this mechanic in 1.13, which was nearly five years ago. Jesus, time is flying by. Do you know how to get infinite bone meal? No? Well, let me tell you. By using bone meal on a moss block, you'll get a bunch of foliage. Now, if we take these items and throw them into a composter, we will actually make a small profit on bone meal. You probably think that using a boat is safe and that you can rely on it. Well, newsflash, you can't. Sure, most of the time you'll be just fine. But if you drop from these specific heights, the boat will simply break and so will your legs. Dolphins are known for their intelligence and that also applies to the Minecraft dolphin. When you feed it some fish, the dolphin will swim towards the nearest chest, which is usually a shipwreck, but it can also be a buried treasure or an ocean ruin. Seems like dolphins are much more useful than I thought. They might even be more useful than axolotls, although that's debatable, because axolotls also have a secret ability. Not only can these little guys give you regen, they can also remove mining fatigue, but only if you help them defeat the mobs they're fighting. Finding an axolotl can be a challenge though, as they only spawn in lush caves. In Minecraft, the caves underground are heavily influenced by the biomes above. Because of this, you will never find lush caves under forests, plains and savannas. Instead, focus on finding dark forests, bamboo jungles and the big boy taiga biome. You know, the one with the super tall trees. We've talked about walking on air, shooting through honey blocks and getting water from stone, but none of these magic tricks compare to this. Okay, Darusak, how did you do that? Let me show you. Start mining some block, and once it's about to break, just walk away. Now, when you walk closer again, the block will instantly break. You should stop using fences in your farms, because they are lame. Rather, you should be using trapdoors. I learned this from my boy iCraftMC, and it completely blew my mind. By using trapdoors, you can set up a one-way fence, where the animals can go in, but they can't leave. Dude, it's funny how Minecraft works. There are a lot of 
cursed things in Minecraft, but nothing beats the petrified oak slab. This block seems to be made out of wood, but it was actually made from stone. That's right, you needed a pickaxe to mine this thing. Since it acted like stone, people used it to build houses that were immune to fires, because at the time, fire used to spread super quickly. The massive structure in the middle of the ancient cities looks like a giant portal. This sparked a lot of discussion. Will there be a new dimension? Is that where the warden comes from? The portal is made from another new block called reinforcement forced deep slate and this block is now going to be the hardest block in all of minecraft without using bugs or glitches how long could you survive in the void this guy had a goal of spending 100 minecraft days in the void in survival the only way to live down there is by constantly eating golden apples and you'll need a couple thousand of these as well as a few elytra so bring some shulker boxes with you after grinding for days he managed to achieve his goal setting a new world record in the meantime Mojang might have 600 employees, but only a few of them are famous. Agnes Larson is mostly known from the Minecraft live events. Lydia Winters was the first woman hired by Mojang and helped with adding Alex to the game. Nathan Adams, better known as Dinnerbone, is a technical director and he is famous for being upside down. There isn't much info about Marcus Toivonen as he is quite secretive about his identity, but we do know that he was the one who created the new Minecraft logo. Years ago, Notch wanted to create a red dragon. However, since then, the idea has been sitting on the shelf. The ender dragon is the final boss, so adding another one seems unlikely. However, Jeb, the lead designer, has stated that if red dragons were ever to be implemented, then players would probably get them from the dragon egg. If I were to ask you what the biggest Minecraft controversy was, what would you say? The 1.9 combat update? Not just tweets? Or what about the new chat reporting nonsense? All of these were pretty big, until the dream cheating scandal happened. This drama was so big that even my grandmother heard about it. This is the worst arrow type in all of Minecraft. It's called the arrow of luck and you can find it in 1.14 snapshot. You might be confused what luck even does. It improves your chances of getting great loot, whether that's from fishing or from chests. There's also an effect called bad luck, which does the exact opposite. Enderman made zombie sounds before Mojang gave them their own sound. In the beta demo, Enderman dropped diamonds instead of pearls. Enderman had green eyes and were able to pick up any block, including obsidian, spawners and even bedrock. The most annoying mob in all of Minecraft has to be the Phantom. In 2017, it won the first ever mob vote and then went to become the most disliked mob ever. The Phantom had so much potential, yet it ended up being just annoying. This is called a wave machine. Mambo Jumbo took it to the extreme, designing several different patterns using minecarts. The wave machine is fairly complex, but we're just scratching the surface. Iron golems can actually attack villagers, but Dadusak, how is that possible? Well, most of the time the iron golem has nerves of steel, good one. Those nerves run out when a firework set off by a villager damages the golem. It's safe to say he didn't expect that one. During some snapshots, players began noticing two oak logs sticking out from the ground. This this seemed strange enough because there are no two block tall trees. This mystery was solved when one of the players went into a cave and saw a bunch of leaves. Some oak trees were generating upside down, which explains the wooden logs sticking out from the grass. I can confidently say that you've never heard of the Zombigin. That's because the Zombigin was in the game for just one small snapshot. The developers messed up the code so badly and accidentally created this monstrosity. In this specific snapshot, trying to summon a chicken jockey results in a pig and a zombie riding the same one chicken. Unfortunately, this error was fixed in the next update, which led to this mob almost being forgotten in the history of Minecraft. Mojang has been working on a completely new combat system, which has only been accessible through some secret snapshots. The trident will become the most overpowered weapon, because it will give you reach hacks. But that's not all, the axe has less reach than the sword, and every weapon will now have a charge. This is similar to the cooldown we now have, but instead of affecting damage, it affects reach. The shield has also been changed. If you have a normal shield without a banner, then you're lame. Because now having a banner will increase your damage resistance as well as your knockback resistance, making the shield twice as good. You're looking at the most efficient XP farm ever made. It takes less than an hour to go from level 0 to level 1000. This insane farm was designed by Raceworks and it works by summoning 4 ender dragons at once, killing them with TNT. The reason why this farm is so powerful is because it makes 
makes every dragon drop the maximum XP amount. But even with 21,000 levels, repairing my helmet is still too expensive.